and welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam. He's known as the first Vietnamese chef and the second in Asia to have his own star on the Cordon Bleu Boulevard. Much like the many Hollywood stars are honored in the Los Angeles Walk of Fame. Now rising to the top in his career as a renowned chef in the United States and also a master chef in the French culinary arts and after 20 years of living and working abroad, he remains quite devoted to both Vietnamese cuisine to the world and he's worked up some of his own plans as well as a few secrets also and in the following we'll find out who this person is as he's the guest of Talk Vietnam this week. Dương Huy Khai, executive chef at Anna Mandara in San Francisco, is considered one of the world's leading Asian chefs and one of the pioneers of modern Vietnamese cuisine. He has uniquely combined authentic Vietnamese cuisine with classic French technique. Using these traditional recipes and inspiration from his native village of Nha Trang on the south central coast of Vietnam, Khai has created some of the most original and striking executions of modern Vietnamese dishes in the world. He is the first Vietnamese chef to get a star on Cotton Bleu Boulevard in California, where famous chefs are honored, similar to the Walk of Fame in Hollywood aimed at celebrities. He returned to Vietnam at least twice a year to explore the local cuisine and traditional dishes from different regions. Being Vietnamese, I'm proud of the country's diverse cuisine, he said. I would do my best to promote its criticisms abroad. It's nice for you to join us here on Talk Vietnam again. Our guest today is indeed renowned Vietnamese chef Zhu Huy Khai, and he'll share with us some more of his passion in promoting Vietnamese cuisine to the world. We'll also learn about his efforts in helping disadvantaged women here in Vietnam how to become chefs. Thank you very much, Mr. Khai, for joining us here today. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm very, very happy to be here today. Thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to join us. Now, you. Um, uh, congratulations. You've just won the gold prize at the International Beijing Culinary Competition for your Salagan soup. And Salagan soup, that's such a, you know, it's, it's a very, um, um, you know, prize and precious uh, dish. Yes, I think because Vietnamese, we have the best burners in the whole world. Yes. So we have to represent that for our country. So that's the reason I bring that with me to uh, Taipei competition. Let's go back a little bit to the beginning now about your passion in cooking. Obviously, you're a very renowned chef, as we've seen in the introduction clip. Um, tell us a little bit about when did you discover this passion in cooking? When I was young, I'm always like eating, especially any dishes I love to eat. And um, I have been lucky to travel around in Vietnam with my family, so we live in Nha Trang. When I was young, I moved to um, south of Vietnam and then in Saigon for those years. I learned a lot, and I like to eat, especially I like to eat. But when I grow up in America, and I love cooking, but I can't do it because my family always wish me to be doctor, engineer, rather than to be a cook. So that's the reason I'm focused on study engineer rather than cooking. But uh, two and a half years later, after college, two and a half years, so in college, so I quit for university. So I come into the restaurant business, and I discover one thing: God gave me a talent that I did not even know that time. So I'm created. This is very good. I carve and everything. I never study in the book or learn from anybody. Exactly. After that, so I think if I have a talent, then what should I do? So I decide to pack up my Lagos moved to France, so I went to Cordon Bleu in Paris. So I went to that school for 15 months program, like two years, right. and I studied. Let's, let's slow down a little bit and go back to your childhood days a little bit. Tell me a little bit about your family. Were, were there chefs in your family? Yes, my family, we have 12 children member family. Um, my, my mother always cooked for each individual for the way they like it. So that's the reason. And it's very tough in the family. You cook a big family. Mm -hmm. But all my sister and brother, they cook very well. And we have few restaurants in America. Oh, wow. When so we first come to the United States. So this and tradition. After that, we, I start to learn from them. And I try to create a lot the way I like it. And my family always, oh, you're very good. But I did not realize I'm that good. And 
until I discover, I create friends in Vietnamese style. And uh, one day on the television, and a lot American newspaper on CBS, and they vote me one of the best young New England chef. And I realized, wow, is that I good? So I believe, I said, no, I'm not that good. I'm good, but not enough. So I decided to go to Yes, what did your family That time, they're not happy. I make a decision <laughs> to go to Paris because they think I'm a good chef already. Just a waste money, you know, Vietnamese people. <laughs> yes. To waste the money to go to school like this. Because the 60,000 those years I spent in school, I can buy a, a big house in New England that time. But I think education is more important than anything in life. And I studied at La France for five months. Five and months. I, I joined the school and I worked very hard. And uh, for 60,000 for me, it's not enough. So I have to work as a maid, somebody house, so they provide the room for me, room and board for me. That's why I can survive for a few months. And I said, no, I just want to go just straight to school. I need to concentrate on school. So um, finally, I finished school at Codopler at the first American in 13, uh, you know, like the first American 13 years, get number one at Codopler. Oh, wow. And even for Vietnam, if you can count. Yes, that. of course, Vietnam. And I'm very, very happy. That first time for me to be honored. As I understand, each, you know, to learn each um, dish costs 375 yeah. US dollars. Yeah, look at dollars. the money I calculate, like $375 per oh, dish. Is. God. That is still cheap and reasonable. After I finished Cote Bleu in Paris, and I went to another cooking school they called Le Noche for Petitiary Le Noche to do all the, the cake for desserts in the restaurant. It cost me $2,000 $2, a wow. week, not include the hotel or the food. <laughs> so that time I can study only one month. Yes. And I broke. Oh. So I decided to go back home. Um, now, you studied and worked hard uh, abroad for years. You lived in America, you lived in France. Um, how have you always kind of managed to, you know, pour your heart out towards Vietnamese food? You know, you've always stuck to it. When I was sense. young, or when I first come to the USA, always thinking about my country. Sooner or later, maybe 50 years, 20 years, whatever, I will come back to my country. Because I think the Vietnamese cuisine is so wonderful of variety. So that's the reason I'm focused on study in France. When you go to a Vietnamese restaurant in the United States, they were asking, what is kind of cuisine? They always say Vietnamese and French. That's the reason France is our background cooking. That's the reason I want to go back to France and mm. study the root of French cooking so I can understand what is the Vietnamese cuisine all about. That's very interesting. So, which Vietnamese food do you think is best known to the world, um, in your opinion? In my opinion, right now around the world, people are always thinking like chai yo, like nem, or pho, or banh mi, or those things. To them, I then that's just a beginning. Exactly. Of that's the just cuisine. The tip of the yes, iceberg. Yes, the tip of the iceberg. And I believe the Vietnamese cuisine will go beyond the pho, beyond the Name and beyond the uh, goi ku. Because Vietnamese food is very good though. I believe it. We have the deep inside of the Vietnamese cuisine and variety. So we can create those things, bring into the market, like bring into the world, let people realize this is Vietnamese. And we're very lucky. I think this is our land, very lucky. All the seafood surround the whole country of Vietnam. So I think that's the best cuisine we have. Where would you rank? Vietnamese cuisine on the world map? I always say right now, I believe is in on the top five. Top five. I believe it. You've learned, you know, obviously Occidental cuisine um, in the States, 
um, particularly in France. Um, and you're also trying to hold on to a lot of Vietnamese recipes as well. So how would you describe your own cooking style? My cooking style, like people say, oh, you grow up in America when you were star 14 years old. How do you know about the Vietnamese cuisine? Because you left early. No, they're right. They have the right questions. But for me, after I finished school, when I opened the restaurant business, and I go back to Vietnam two times a year to research about the Vietnamese cuisine, the Vietnamese cuisine. So that's why I use the Vietnamese cuisine and the French technique to modify of my own way. So it's almost like fusion. Yeah, in fusion a way. Vietnamese fusion. Fusion yes. and innovative and new. Yes. In the following clip, we have uh, images, uh, and you know, do feast your eyes on a particular dish that's very popular uh, from a chef Khai, and its name is the eye of tuna. It's literally cooked from the eye of the tuna, and it's a dish that he's been amending and kind of perfected to create in a specialty at his restaurant. So let's have a look at that. What is the dish that you are going to introduce today? This, uh, uh, in, in this we just like, like a deep fried ahi tuna eyes. So this is, uh, the, this is original from my hometown, Nha Trang. Oh. And they have so many eyes, big eyes. The ahi tuna, like for Japanese people, is sushi. So that's why I try to create something special. Oh. First of all, I steam the cook ahead. And now what I do is, do you know why I soak into the milk? Maybe to element the fish smell. Exactly. Mm. You're not the chef, but you get because mostly all the fish smell. So use the milk, fresh milk, oh, to get away the order, get away the smell. Oh. That's the technique for French cooking. So after this, put in the flour. The flour. Oh. The egg wash. Right. So this is the breadcrumb. Mm. So we uh, ground them as far as possible. So now we uh, defy them, uh, can we? I heard that uh, in this restaurant, you offer only 50 packs per day. Why is that? Because it's, um, I cannot produce this a lot because it's a uh, um, labor thing stuff, mm -hmm. marinade for one day. Mm -hmm. So if we can do more than that, we cannot do it. Mm -hmm. And then this. This is the morning glory. Morning we julienne glory. them. Oh. And then the... Um, Balsamic vinegar with olive oil. This is a morning glory. We saute with garlic and shallot, mm. olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. Mm. Saute very fast. So now, the eye is right on top. Yeah. Oh. There we go. This is a chili oil. Chili oil. For spicy. Oh. Why spicy? I like spicy because sometimes spicy. Uh, like a fishy smell, mm. so go with spicy, mm. dominate, dominate a little bit, oh. spicy. Beautiful. Okay, and this is kumquat sauce, like kumquat, mm. the, like the baby lemon thing. And all the materials you use in here are from Vietnam. From Vietnam, everything from Vietnam. For my hometown, the uh, fish eyes. The morning glory mm -hmm. and the kumquat sauce, that's it? Very and fish good sauce? Piece. I serve only 50 today. When I run out, that's it. And each person coming in have only one order. Yeah, and you if you want some more, go here, come here tomorrow. Yes, exactly. In your restaurant, you also introduce, this is not the only one, you introduce a lot of the, the food, the, the fine cuisine in the central region. Yes, in my restaurant, mostly I research and study for the central coast of Vietnam, mm -hmm. the cuisine. So I restore, it's I mean like some dishes almost lost, and then I restore them again and create the way customer will like it. Great. Thank you very much. So I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, beautiful. I understand at uh, Boon Khe, which is your restaurant yes. here in Ho Chi Minh City. Now the slogan of the restaurant uh, shows that, you know, you're promoting the cuisine of central Vietnam. Um, is it kind of a risky approach to focus on, you know, local cuisines in somewhere like, you know, the southern metropolis here? I promote the central, uh, central coast of Vietnamese cuisine. The reason is they have so many variety and they're going to be lost. It's a man like 
years, hundred years ago, our ancestors created that disease. If we don't restore it, then maybe disappear. So that's why I went back to Vietnam, into the country, and to learn from the ancestor, learn from the old people, the talking about the disease. So the memories and the way I learn from them, and I create the disease. I understand that in the United States, you have co-owned a restaurant with a movie star Don Johnson, and you highlight that waits of more than an hour are not something uncommon, and some celebs are very familiar diners here, and uh, you know it must be you know popular one for one reason because you know the movie star Don Johnson has brought a lot of his friends there. But how how have you been able to keep it that popular? Actually, the cuisine speaks by itself the way I cook it, and especially my restaurant. It's so beautiful. It represents the country for Vietnam. Mm. Because all the um, artifacts, all the pieces I bought from Vietnam, bring to uh, San Francisco, and we install them, even the roof, even the floor, even oh. the window, everything from Vietnam coming in. Look like I saw the world, our culture. Exactly, so it's like a little piece of Vietnam. Yes. In your opinion, uh, what makes Americans in particular and you know foreigners the world over in general um, you know attracted to Vietnamese cuisine health, health. only one word health. healthy yes healthy and variety the uh, ingredient mm -hmm. and the freshness and not uh, the reason is when Vietnamese cooking everything fresh we don't use a lot of oil like Chinese or we so they or we overcook on the vegetable, everything is raw. So this is talking about health. That is the key for Vietnamese cooking. So everyone loves it. Have you got any special memories of a, a particular tenant, uh, someone who came to your restaurant and kind of left the, you left the deep impression on them, of course, but they left a deep impression on you as well. One of the family from Wei, mm -hmm. they came to my restaurant because the, uh, the children brought her to my restaurant. So I try to eat my food, and uh, after the, she finished the dishes, all the dishes, and she called me come out. So I talked to the customer. I like to have the customer finish. I love to walk around and ask him how my meal, how's your meal, and she says, first time she really like Vietnamese food. I said, what the reason? Because it's more like. Friend. They said, no, it's not fine. It's just the technique, the way you decorate, but the way the ingredient, the way we eat, it left something for Vietnam. For Vietnamese, we test the ingredients. So we talk back and forth, back and forth, and she introduced to me. She was the chef cooking for the king of Vietnam. Oh, really? Yes. And she, she's very old now. Not now. That time she was old. And she asked me to do a favor. I said, what the favor can I do? She said, she regret she did not teach any her generation to learn from Vietnamese cooking. Because she know a lot of secret of Vietnamese cooking. Mm -hmm. But now she come to my restaurant, she enjoy very much, and she like it. She know that is what is all the generation should learn from me. So she asked me, will I really open my heart to share with the, the Vietnamese young generation? And I said, that would be honor. I love to share everything. That's the reason I learned. I exactly. learned for what? I learned for business, and I learned to share the world, mm -hmm. especially young generation of Vietnamese chef yes. who want to learn. That's a very precious memory, meeting with the, you know, she used to be a yeah, chef during a chef. the um, imperial dynasty yes, exactly. here in Vietnam. These homemakers in the central coastal region of Vietnam have no idea the man standing in front of them is an internationally famous chef. They seem quite surprised that a man would want to know in detail how each type of raw fish can be processed and cooked. Chef Zhang Hui Kai is not wasting any time on his short visit home to Nha Trang City. He spends every working hour learning about the local cuisine. This is something he has been doing for many years across the rural areas of Vietnam. Mam Ruot, or gut paste, is a specialty of his hometown. With his marvelous skills, Chef Kai has added new flavors to this dish, yet the paste still remains its unique taste. 
I created. This is somehow like everyone really enjoy like it. So that was the way I create some recipe of my family, how they do. But I put more in the red wine, house wine, you know, like a red wine. So I put them in, so reduced together. It gives the flavor, the sweetness of the grape and the color of the red wine. This house is where Chef Kai grew up with his parents and 12 siblings. The chef's mom is a wonderful cook from her city. His older sister is now almost 70 years old. She still recalls vividly the passion for cooking of his young brother, who has now become a famous chef recognized around the world. Thì ở nhà chị với mẹ thì xuống bếp nấu á Thì ảnh dành Ảnh nói cho anh làm với Rồi ảnh cũng nấu ăn Đó Các món nào mà ở nhà bà mẹ nấu á Thì ngày Chủ nhật rảnh á Thì ảnh đi chợ Ảnh kêu chị đi chợ và ảnh mua đồ về Ảnh tự nấu Nấu thì nêm nếm rất là ngon Although Chef Kai is very busy with his restaurant business in the US And being the judge for many well-known cooking competitions he still comes back to Vietnam two or three times a year. He spends time here to get knowledge of the rustic Vietnamese cuisine. Now, after decades of collecting traditional recipes, Chef Kai has restored over 10 dishes that were on the verge of disappearing. I want to learn as much as possible, and one day I will write a cookbook so like everyone enjoy it, like everyone see it. And then some this uh, some this is very good, very well known to me. But the very small town out of the country, no one know. I want to create the dishes and let everyone know. Put in the map, so some they want to go tourists go that area to make sure they enjoy the dishes. Besides promoting traditional Vietnamese cuisine, Chef Kai also plans to introduce a high quality Vietnamese culinary brand to the world, including dishes such as bird's nest soup made from the nests of swips that has family raises. This is the dish of winning the gold medal at the International Beijing Culinary Competition in June 2012. Now I understand that, uh, you know, you came back uh, about a year ago, um, and then, but before that you had already come back to Vietnam quite regularly two to three times a year to, you know, research different kinds of food. Tell us about, you know, wh why have you decided to do this? I come back to Vietnam, I told you, after I finished uh, Cô and I opened a restaurant in San Francisco, I'd like to go back to my root, Vietnamese, Vietnam. So I learned cooking, the technique, the style, the flavor, the bevo, everything. So I learned from Vietnamese cuisine. You have to involve, you have to dig in, you have to learn what people eat on a daily basis, and then you learn from those dishes, different reasons, and you create your own. And then why I come back? I came back because it's, I have the program in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. Mm. I'm the founder of Chef Without Borders. Yes. And I fundraise the money, and I give out scholarship to all the younger in rural of Vietnam, yes. like for people's unfortunate. Tell us about, you know, the, obviously you came back to Vietnam uh, to kind of travel around because you wanted to go back to your roots and you wanted to discover more about Vietnamese cuisine. Tell us some of the memories or some of the stories you had in your different trips across the country. Um, I have one this. <laughs> I learned about the chicken. chicken. Because I hear the chicken in one night very good. The okay. rice dishes. Mm -hmm. What I did is I just from American, from I flew to Thailand, to Bangkok, to test all the food, try all the food, and I came back into Saigon in that evening. And I called my sister in Nha Trang. I said, can you book for me one car? So wait for me at the airport. So in Saigon, that evening and four o'clock in the morning, I have to fly to Nha Trang. So I get there at six o'clock in the morning, and my sister picked me up. And I came to the house. After she picked me up at the airport, I went to the house to respect my parents because they passed away, so we have incident. And then we roll eight hours the rock into one night to learn one dishes, a chicken rice dishes, and, and how to make the rice noodle. So I went there eight hours. And we roll back into Nha Trang for another eight hours <laughs> oh, until to one o'clock in the, in the morning.
What do you feel when you find a dish that's so good but has been, you know, lost? You, you know? know what? If I find a dish, have you ever have a chance to win a lottery? No. That is me. Unfortunately. <laughs> when I find the dish, it was so wonderful to learn those dishes. I feel like I hit the lottery. You. <laughs> really. Victorious. Yes. Because the dish cost me a lot of money to go to France for one dishes. So here I travel to Vietnam, fly everything. It doesn't cost me that much. And I learn one dishes and I feel so good. And I can create so many things, so many ways. So I feel like I hit the lottery. And it's I also, can. you know, dishes on the verge of being lost. Exactly. Yeah, so, so the fact that, you know, you found it and you're, you're reviving yes, it, yes. that's also very precious. How many dishes of that kind have you been able to rediscover or do you keep count? Oh yeah, I keep count. It's not a lot, less than 20. Can you be more specific about the different um, social as well as charitable activities you've done here in Vietnam? In Vietnam, <laughs> we are shop with our border, I'm the founder, and we did some fundraising money to help out all the unfortunate children, especially girls, in the rural area in Vietnam, like Long Xuyen, Chau Doc, Cần Thơ, those areas. So we fundraise the money. So we help those young girls to have a career like chef. So we uh, use of the organization we call Pacific Link. <coughs> and they select all the young girls. They come to Saigon and we provide the money for them. The school, clothes, everything, bicycle, room and board, everything, That's the whole thing. Sweet. And when they finish at the go school that the program for I believe is six months. Six months. And when they graduate we place them into the hotel or restaurant. Mm -hmm. After the weekend, they send back the money to help them family. So we have been do for forty uh four or five years already. You know, before uh, this uh, founding of Chef Without Borders, you were fundraising to help tsunami victims. Um, and then you came back to Vietnam, you founded Chef Without Borders and started to work with disadvantaged women. Why, um, particularly this group of uh, disadvantaged people? Very good question. I want to share that with you. Uh, I watched a TV, television at my home, and I saw the program on um, CBS and NBC, the report about anti-human trafficking in Cambodia. And I saw a like, young girl during that time, she was like eight years old, nine years old. And I saw those, all the children, and react into bring back memories of my daughter. So I'm thinking, those, what happened? That is my daughter. What should I do? So I cannot do anything, so I decide. It touched my heart, and I watched cry, have some tear in my eyes. So I decide, at least I will do something for those children. So I decide, Chef Without Border, I did the fundraising. I asked my member, can we do the fundraising, uh, fundraising for anti-human trafficking? They all agree. So that's why we did fundraising that time, about $150,000. Wow. And we used those money to fund the children in Vietnam. Yes. But, but how, how, you know, how did you get from the idea of raising for anti-human trafficking um, reasons to teaching disadvantaged women how to, uh, you know, cook yeah. it, or, or the program. Because we are the chef. Mm -hmm. When we're talking to the chef without border, so I have connection with Pacific Link, the person at the program decade in Vietnam, in southern of Vietnam. <laughs> so I asked her to look at some children, those all the young girls for us. So we love to fundraise for them. Exactly. And then we place them into culinary, Saigon tourist culinary school in Saigon. So we ask them for a program, you know, we pay the whole thing. So we give full scholarship all the young girls. Yes. So have been for four or five years. Uh, so wh what, what do you hope to do for them in the near future? I already fundraise for them and they make good money and they send back home. They're very happy. I make a few of them. They're really, really happy. And um, that's how I wish. Yeah. So maybe they will have happiness family after that make money and marry and meet somebody that be happy. be happy. Well, as you can see, Chef Zin Hui Kai is very, very passionate about, you know, having a female chef 
giving you know his heart out, and he's also giving back to the community. Um, he has run numerous charitable programs, prominent among which is teaching disadvantaged young women how to cook. We'll have a look at that in the following. Without much time to enjoy his victory in the Beijing International Culinary Competition, Zhu Weihai's busy schedule drove him back to Ho Chi Minh City. Today, he has a meeting with Niu and Sang. These two young ladies are sponsored by Chefs Without Borders, an organization that Kai has founded. After Kai's efforts, these disadvantaged young women have chances to escape poverty. Em học trong trường Sài Gòn Tư Đức ra do bên tổ chức công tế bên nhà chú Khải tài trợ cho tụi em học. Em học xong ra rồi bên trường cũng có giới thiệu việc làm cho tụi em. Hiện giờ tụi em có công việc ổn định. In addition to visiting the famous chef. The two young ladies were lucky enough to join a quick training course led by Kai. With decades of experience in the culinary industry and a kind heart towards unfortunate souls, Kai hopes he can contribute to helping disadvantaged youngsters in Vietnam. Em cảm thấy mình học đã được học nấu ăn này thì tương lai của em sau này chắc em sẽ đi theo ngành nấu ăn ổn định. Và hiện tại bây giờ em cũng phụ được gia đình em rất là nhiều. For a long time, Kai had used his influence as one of the top chefs in the U.S. to encourage people to join in his charitable programs. Beyond supporting the poor, Kai is trying his best to support poor Vietnamese students and help the victims of human trafficking to reintegrate into society. More significantly, he's creating opportunities for them to find jobs in the culinary industry. Tell us a little bit about the outcome of the program um, after their train. What happens? After the train and the design, either they want to stay in Saigon or they want to go back to their hometown to have a choice. So I like want to stay around Saigon. So we place them into a hotel or restaurant. They work in, they make oh, money, wow. and they send back home. They're very That's happy. Right. So I ask them they want to go back. They said their dream is they like to make enough money and go back home to open a some more Yes. So that was the dream, and I think that dream will come true. That's very sweet, and you know that that's that's wonderful that they you know get jobs after this because obviously they've been very well trained mm -hmm. uh, with the help of your fundraiser, and um, you know get jobs and basically head for a better life. Yes. Yes. What you say are you most proud of in life, and your career? The proudest in life in my career, I. Receive award. They call like um, chef star in San Francisco. They call California Culinary Academy. That's we call the So that is for achievement for lifetime. For people who get a star like on the boulevard, like Hollywood Boulevard with the star on the street. So we call chef star, and I receive that honor. Yes. And that is the high, highest of my life. The highlight of my life. The highlight of your yeah. life receiving that award. And me and Yang Ken Cook, only the two Asian, received this award with friends and American chef. Yes. Less than 100 chef. The star on yeah. the court. All those blue. people already passed. Oh, wow. Only Yang Ken Cook and I still survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing. One of the, the things that you, you know, are famous for just saying over and over again is cooking must be creative. Cooking must be creative, but one word I think you have to have heart and passion. You got to have heart and passion yep, as you well. You have to have passion. That's the key. If you don't have it, you're not there. And you also say, so you said, you know, a famous chef can't be a famous chef if you don't have morals. Exactly. Can you elaborate on that? Cooking, you have to have everything combine not only the talent, the hurt, the more, more what you have inside of you. Because when you create the dishes, you think that person, you love or you care, you want to enjoy every moment. Make sure you cook the right thing. You're not like create the, the wrong way. So okay, I just cook quick, fast, a raw fish like to enjoy. No, you have to know when I send out the dish, this is proper sample me. Mm -hmm. All my heart for this this is your heart and soul you. on the plate. Exactly. So that's the thing you can learn a lot. You can do many things if you have a really passion. Yeah. 
okay. and with a big heart. Yes. Now you once said that you know neither time nor money bothers bothers you. Um, what makes the most sense to you? What is the most important thing for you in life? For me, one thing in life, I I have to say, like. In your life, you always open your hand. Why you open your hand? First of all, when you open your hand, all the people can take it. If you keep close your hand, you get nothing. You don't give nobody. So you have to open your hand, and people take whatever you give, and you have that. Same token, you will receive what God gives to you, or your friend, other people will give to you, you receive. That, to me, is uh, you know like <coughs> that right? You give and take. To me, in life, you have to give and take. You cannot like be selfish by yourself. You cannot work that way. Yes, and that's your life philosophy, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you give and take. up you know ultimately <laughs> what do you think makes a good dish passion <laughs> when you look at any dishes you have the passion in that dishes you create and you will come out wonderful if you don't have passion the dish is not that good trust me you have to have passion when you cook that dishes you know your special guest you know your girlfriend you know your boyfriend coming whatever you want to focus that thesis and you love that person, you want to create them. You want to buy the fresh food, fresh, fresh vegetable, or fresh everything, expensive, but whatever you want for that person enjoy it. So that's what passion in there. No matter how talented you are, but you have passion, the thesis will be good. So tell me a little bit about uh, your family. Um, your wife and kids are based in uh, San Francisco, is in that San Francisco. right? My, my wife is a chef. She She's also care. a chef. She's also the chef. She takes care of the Anamanda restaurant in San Francisco. Oh. And my two children, my daughter 13 years old and my son 7 years old. But my daughter, she's only 13 years old. I know you're going to ask, is she going to be a chef like you? No, she's not going to be a chef. She's going to be a food writer food credit. Huh. Because even she's 13 years old right now, she knows the food very well. She eats everything. She travels with me, she tests, she eats everything. She knows the real 13 food. 13 years yep. old, wow. And she tests the food, she can criticize, she can tell you what missing. And whenever we go to restaurants, especially Vietnamese restaurants, they always think she's just a baby, a girl, whatever, don't eat spicy, don't put onions, scallion, whatever. She eats everything. Name. No. <laughs> I'm not a baby to bring out the regular like what my dad have. And then she eats and enjoy it. And she quit the side too. Wow. Wow. So she's I know she will, she's will a be very good. future food critic. Yes. <laughs> um, so the passion I can see runs in the family. How about for your son? Any, you know, My son's chance, seven maybe? years old, so I don't know. He always <laughs> say when he grow up, he likes to be a deep washer. <laughs> <laughs> Rather to be a chef. I don't know, he might change his mind. He, he's, he has the passion, yes. you know. Enthusiastic. Uh, what would you say is your key to success? Hard working. Hard work. The key to success is hard working. People working eight hours, you have to work in 16 hours, you have to work double and you success, you will get there. And with your passion. What would you say is your biggest dream now? My biggest dream is open a restaurant with a cooking school oh. so I can have all the children 
all the unfortunate Here in Vietnam? Yeah. Here in Vietnam. Yes, that's my dream, to open a cooking school and to help them and to uh, create them like a leadership guy or whatever. <laughs> and when, when I pass away, at least my legacy is still going on. And um, my style, my technique, my cooking. So I like to pass on all the children, you know, all the young generation. That's why I told you the old lady yes. asked me to do, uh, to do the mission about us. So I'm willing to do it. You're carrying on her advice, yeah. basically. Well, thank you very much, Chef Kai, for joining thank us you, here you. on Talk Vietnam, sharing your passion, your heart, your morals, um, you know, as part of your cooking and all of your wonderful experiences. And we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors and that you will thank you, thank you. achieve your dream of opening that thank restaurant. You for giving me a to sit here, talk to you, and share with you the whole world. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And that also wraps up our edition of Talk Vietnam this week with Chef Zun Vichai and all of his wonderful stories about the culinary world and his passion to bring Vietnamese cuisine to the world. We hope you enjoyed it as much as I have and we'll see you more next time. Goodbye for now.